Let us pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, how grateful we are to be here and how we pray now that it would please you to please let us preach. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. It's a joy and a privilege to be wherever I am. I preached somewhere last night. I caught a 19-seater and flew in here today, and they landed somewhere. And I'm glad to be here. Bill, thank you for inviting me. Dr. Faulkner, thank you for help getting me here. And thank you for being here in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I came for my first time 40 years ago. And so I'm glad to be back here and to be with you. You are wonderful and marvelous people. Isn't this a great gathering? My, that singing. That singing from the choir and then that lady that led that song. Uh, she reminded me the Texas billionaire went to this concert. <clears throat> and I'm from Texas, so I can talk about it. He went to this concert and he heard this woman sing. And he heard a voice and he said to his sidekick, go back there to a room and tell her, ask if she's married, if she's married. And said, if she's not married, tell her, I want to marry her tonight. That voice, that voice, that voice, that voice. So he went back there and he said, my boss wants to marry you. Are you married? He says, no, I'm not married, but I'm not about to marry your boss. Who is your boss? I don't know anything about your boss said, well, he, he's, he's quite substantial and he plans to give you a million dollar cash as a, uh, uh, a wedding gift. And she said, well, you think we can get somebody to marry us tonight? Uh, <laughs> and so they got married and they went home. And when they got home, she pulled a wig off. And he said, that's not your hair? She said, no. Then he pulled the teeth out. That those are not your teeth? No. She said, well, you better sing something else. I'm going to cancel that check. <laughs> so this woman sang, 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 sang. My, didn't she sing tonight? And so I am indeed glad to be here. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you again. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about Say It Again. Now, it's not the one that I did in... Um, in, in, in um, Colorado. I want to talk with you about say it again. The devil, the devil is surely quietly moving subtly, but he is trying to quieten the witness of the believers. That's his number one objective right now is to quieten the believers down. In other words, he would ask the question to the average person walking by here, what on earth is all this going on? They said, well, there's some Bill Gates or somebody. Well, let's quieten it down. Let's, let's, let's try. What, all these people coming out on Saturday to hear singing, preaching from a book they've been preaching from from years, singing songs from a song book they've been singing for years the devil is trying to quieten us down he wants us quiet he does not want us to testify as to his goodness his greatness his majesticness the devil wants us to quieten down about jesus now i drop by here to tell you to turn it up Turn it up, 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 everybody. And while I'm going, now you have to cooperate with me because I preach just like I do at my own church, so you have to cooperate. And while we turn it up, turn to your neighbor and say, a smile would help your face, turn it up. A smile would help your face, turn it up. You're, you're not looking too well, a smile will help it, turn it up. For we who have been born again, we not only have something to shout about, but we have a stewardship to shout. I said we have a stewardship to shout. We have a stewardship to let it be known 
we have not only something to let something be known about I mean I was telling our church the other day it would take a whole lot to make me uh, 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 depressed or uh, to make me uh, down in spirit because I have come from such a long way I'm way ahead of wherever I thought I would ever be until I mean how can you get human uh, uh, how can you become down in spirit when you were reared in a log cabin and I now live where I live uh, you, you just can't be down in the spirit because you've come from too far how can I be picking cotton in sweet home and up here in Indianapolis speaking to all of these folk of all colors and all kinds you can't get depressed that way that's a long ways and so we want to turn it up we want to get louder and louder not so much in volume but constant in our witness and our talk about Jesus Christ we want to talk about Jesus Christ we want to talk about Jesus Christ it's almost ironic that in Moscow on the streets of Moscow in the classrooms in Moscow in the churches of Moscow that's all they're doing now is talking about Jesus Christ I mean in your public school rooms you can just read about Jesus Christ I know it I was over there I was over there I preached over there and a teacher can just open up her Bible and read it in the public school now that's ex-heathenistic Moscow now in Christian America we can't do this we can't do that we can't do this we got to hold the Bible upside down outside inside and everything but it is time for Christians to take the position of Peter and John in Acts the fourth chapter we cannot help but speak the things we have seen and heard we have we got a condition we have a condition we got a serious condition more serious than bluebonic plague we have the can't help it we just got to talk about Jesus we've just got to talk about Jesus because of what we have seen and heard now there's some things that we need to say again about Jesus and I have come here today to hope that we can create a fire right here in Indiana let it roll across these prairies go on over it, burn up uh, Illinois or whoever surrounds you about it now number one we need to talk about and say it again as to who our Savior is. Gradually but surely, we are lining up, are permitting people to line up a group of saviors, almost a smorgasbord of saviors. You can pick this one out, you can pick that one out, you can pick this one out, you can pick that out, and whichever one suits you, go ahead and let that be your Savior. That won't work with me. I have to have a particular savior. I have to have a particular kind of savior. I'm in so much, I'm so controversial, I get in so much mess, I'm threatened so often. The Ku Kluckers gave me six years to live in Texas when I was 26 years old. I'm 60 now. I have to have a certain kind of a savior. The Black Panther said I would be dead in six years when I was 29 years old. I'm 60 now. I have to have a certain kind of a savior. I cannot have a savior that has eyes and can't see, that has feet and can't walk, that has hands and can't reach me. When I get in trouble, when I say, Lord, he's got to be right there because I don't have no time. I, there ain't no time to waste around. When I say, Lord, trouble is on my path, and and I need him right there and so the first thing that we want to say about our Savior and proclaim it is that our Savior is God I said he's God no 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 Buddha no 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 Confucius no 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 somebody up in some high place that thinks he's God no 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 that ain't enough for us we got to have more than Buddha, more than Confucius, more than Muhammad, more than Sabagura. We've got to have God. 
the problems of this world and the problems of the United States cannot be solved by somebody who thinks he's God. We've got to have somebody who is God and our Savior is God. I turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, Mount Zion ain't, ain't one twentieth the size of this and they knock the roof off. Say, neighbor, neighbor. My, savior my savior is God himself. Is God himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Fooling around with no false God. My Savior is God. Now let's read that. John 1. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus, and the Word was with God. Jesus was with God. And the Word was God. And look here. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, my Savior, and without him, nothing was made that was made, my Savior. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, my Savior. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And let's add to that right quick. And he is the same today as he was yesterday. Let's get real proud right now of who our Savior is. Let's get real joyous of who our Savior is. Our Savior is God. Our Savior is Jesus who is God. Who was in beginning. Who is in beginning. Who is God in the beginning. Our Savior is God. Don't you feel better? Don't you feel wonderful? And you, don't, you who don't have and have not proclaimed anyone as Savior, I offer to you right here, I have been authorized, I have been anointed, I have come for the purpose to tell you that God, Jesus, God, Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the Godhead, offers themselves to you as Father, Redeemer, and Comforter right now. Right now. Right now. You don't have to go 40 days. You don't have to go under the wilderness. You don't have to eat lizards. You can ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart right now and he will be your Savior before you leave this auditorium because he's just that much God. Now these other folk have to take a little time to become your God. They got to work it out. But Jesus can become yours right now. He's mine right now. And he wants to be yours right now. Now the first thing that we want to brag about is that our Savior is God. Now, the next thing I want to brag about is in the book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the uh, church at Philippi. In the sixth verse, in the sixth verse of the second chapter, look what it says. Who, Jesus, being in the form of God, and we have already declared Jesus to be God. Jesus to be God, the one you're praying to and in whose name you pray is God. We accept nothing less. No professors can teach us anything different. No theologians can teach us anything different. Jesus is God and God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. And if that's difficult to you figure out, it's nothing uh, strange about that you can't even figure out your own income tax so how can you deal with this divine matter of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost just accept it just accept it just just do what just, just do like I tell my children 
ever so often my children and now my grandchildren wants to know daddy now now why would them just accept it that's how I came up in the country if I had asked my mama why I would have been bigger than I am now <laughs> some things you accept and then you live to see it fulfilled you live to see it fulfilled who being in the form of God Jesus was and is God now let's describe that and it kind of looks like it right here throne on the throne uh, dressed in whatever is heaven's best and uh, the diadems and the crown and angels all around him and lights shining like this this does look pretty good up here light shining all around him and angels falling down saying holy 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 and Jesus is there in heaven he is not on his way to heaven he is in heaven situated in heaven and angels saying holy unto him holy holy they constantly bow and say holy they constantly bow and say holy I asked one of my mentors Dr. McCardell of Houston Texas I said Dr. McCardell I said doc don't they get tired of just holy and then they come back up and they say holy I said don't they get tired I would get tired I mean 10 or 12 times all right but just every moment every hour holy and Reverend McCardell said no for two reasons for two reasons first of all they do not have human bodies and the only thing that's tired about me right now is this human body if I were not in this human body if my spirit could just get loose it would be no tiredness to me I have to take this human body is the only reason why it's going to take me four hours or five hours to get to Los Angeles if I were out of this body, only in my spirit, heavenly body, I could be in Los Angeles. Soup. I'm already there. When we get to heaven, we can move from world to world. You've seen Bewitch, haven't you, on television? Where she just, soup, soup. That's where she got it from. We're just going to move from earth to earth. We didn't get it from her. She got it from us. We're just going to move from place to place by just being there. And the only reason why you can't do it and I can't do it is because we have these heavenly bodies. I mean these earthly bodies. So we got to drag them around. We got to get, you know, reservations on TWA. We got to get a seat and we have to do all of that because we have earthly bodies. Now the other reason why angels do not, and they don't have earthly bodies so they don't get tired. The other reasons why angels never get tired of saying holy, holy, is because of the greatness of God. You see, they're not doing it out of responsibility. Nobody has ordered them to worship God and say holy. Nobody's paying them minimum wage to say holy. Nobody is, has organized in the choir. God is so much God until he does something and it is so spectacular until the angels just say holy they're doing it out of reverence and 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 joy and and they're saluting him by saying holy and then by the time they get back up he's so much God he's done something else and they say holy and then by the time they get back up in a few seconds and come back up to look at him, he's done something else. And they said, holy. And all day, holy. All night, holy. Because he's just that much God. And if you don't have that concept of God, you don't have the right concept. He changes that much. He's just that much indifference. Well, we could even try it out right here if we were not too lazy and if we didn't have these heavenly bodies. Come on, let's try it. He woke us up this morning. Ain't that enough to say? You didn't say it. You didn't say it like angels would say it. Holy! And then by the time we got up and looked in the mirror, I knew who I was. Holy! And then by the time I reached up and looked in the mirror, I could pronounce my name. Edward Victor Hill. Holy! 
And then without anybody's help, I took my shower. Holy! And without anybody's help, I ate my food. Holy! And I got on a plane, 19 seats. Holy! <laughs> Just all day and all night, there is something for you to cry, holy. I made it on the freeways of Los Angeles. Holy! I wasn't caught up in no gang shoot by. Holy! I don't live in no log cabin no more. Holy! I'm not running from Ku Kluckers no more. Holy! Black Panthers have made peace with me. Holy! baptized seven gang leaders last year. Holy! I'm the official pastor of the Bloods and Crips of my neighborhood. Holy! Don't have no more trouble out of deacons. Throw blood on them. Holy! Who being God, who being God, verse 6, who being God, my Savior is God. You know, all, a lot of time we like to go around and say, my lawyer is so-and-so, my teacher is so-and-so, my bank is so-and-so, but the greatest thing you can say today is my Savior is God. Ain't that wonderful? Now listen to it. But now listen to it. He did not consider it unfair. He did not consider it robbery. To be equal with God. Now, here he is in heaven with everybody saying holy, with everybody bowing, perfectly holy himself and the discussion came what are we going to do about man what are we going to do about Ann and Bill and Dr. Faulkner and all what are we going to do about him justice said it's simple they shall perish because it is written the sin the soul that sinned it shall die and you say it the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the New Testament says the wedges of sin is death. So there is no question about what is to happen to man from justice point of view. He shall perish. But somebody in that conversation must have asked, is that all God is? Is God just, just? Is he the God who just demands justice? Does he have any other attributes than justice? And lo and behold, they said, of course, he's love. And he cannot be more just then he's loving, no more loving than he is just. Well, what would be the loving thing to do for this just God to remain just and to love at the same time? Well, we have to find somebody. It would be loving and just if we could save man, if we could save man. That would be loving. But we can't save him unless the perpetuation, unless the substitute pleases the offended. If we are to save man, then the one God who is offended must accept the sacrifice and not be offended anymore. Well, where are you going to find somebody like that? 
Search all heaven. Let's go to Indianapolis. Search all Indianapolis. Can't find nobody there. Guns of Chicago. Don't even stop. Uh, <laughs> go out to Los Angeles. They all lost. Los Angeles. They lost. So they don't need to stop in there. Let's go to Texas. They got too many big cows. Let's, well, where, where, where do you find somebody that can satisfy the offense of man towards God and at the same time be just? Where do we find a, a perpetuator? Where do we find a somebody who can substitute for the whole not just substitute for one we can't find nobody who can just pick out one of them and say we'll save her and we'll save him and we'll save him and we'll save him and him no 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 we've got to have somebody that will save everybody who will be saved now the other part of that is those who won't be saved, we can't save them. If you, I want to make an announcement here. Anybody here, you will never be in heaven saying, I didn't want to be up here in the first place. <laughs> you will never say, well, my wife just kept on trying to drag me and be convinced. She may well indeed influence you, but if you go to heaven, you're going to go to heaven as a choice of your own. I don't care who influenced you. I don't care what evangelist came to town. I don't care if he hit you at the top of your head and you roll over several benches. When you w woke up, you had to say, yes, Lord. Your priest could sprinkle you, and that's very fine. Let him go ahead and sprinkle you. But as soon as you could get wet yourself, you got to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. I know there are a lot of Episcopal in here, so I won't. Yes, I will. Just start. <laughs> my grandson, six years old, and my daughter is an attorney, a very distinguished attorney. She finished high school at 16, college at 19, law school at 23. She took my side of the family. <laughs> and she's married to a very distinguished attorney. And they live in Western Massachusetts. They had me fooled that they lived in Boston. I was thinking about Roxbury, somewhere over there. And they picked me up at the airport and we drove 40 miles way away from Boston. I said, no, you don't live in no Boston. She lives in Western. And uh, she's and her husband, just a few Negroes there, just one yonder, one there, one over there. And because they are both attorneys, the white community wanted to integrate, you know. And, uh, and, and they brought them in so they could say they integrated. And so they are the four Negro members of the Episcopal Church. My son, daughter, and the two grandsons. So the Episcopal priest was saying, now we're going to have a baptism of a little baby, and you stand here, and you see my daughters being as sophisticated as they are, and Miss Hill, you stand here, you know, fully integrated and all that, and uh, then said, now I'm going to put just a little water on the top of his head right here, and when I put the water there, and wipe it, that will mean he's baptized. My six-year-old grandson raised his hand. And he's always had a British nanny, so he doesn't talk like us. <laughs> I'm going to have him this summer trying to get him adjusted. But... <laughs> he, he raised his hand, and, and, and the priest said, yes, yes, what is it? He said, sir, <clears throat> that would not constitute baptism. <laughs> you would have to put the baby, sir, under the water. <laughs> All the way under the water, just a little dip won't constitute baptism. You must bury him under the water. My grandfather put me all the way under the water.
and my daughter was fainting because she was embarrassed and, and his dad was pulling him out and he told the priest sir you are wrong you you you're wrong contact my granddaddy and he will get you straight you are wrong and my daughter called and said oh daddy we're so embarrassed that we will never be able to and, and daddy can't you do something I said yes I can send him some scriptures to back up what he's talking about our savior is God whether you're sprinkled buried or what have you our savior is God and he thought it not robbery this is what I want to get to he didn't think it was unfair robed in all of the majesticness of God angels and archangels crying holy every day the whole heavens and all the earths are his but when the discussion came what shall we do about man and when we couldn't find nobody nowhere 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 no angel no man he said I'll go praise his name wait a minute now and his mouth wasn't stuck out for the scripture said he didn't think it unfair the son of God already in heaven looking down on earth and what does he see not a single one of you in here your mama's 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 and your daughter's 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 not a single one did he see that was any cleaner than a filthy rag and so when he looked down he didn't see a whole lot of brilliant wonderful people marvelous people he didn't see a whole lot of marvelous souls he saw all had sin and come short of the glory of God he saw that there was no not one that was any better than any aid patient that you have in Annapolis and yet he said I'll go oh what a wonderful Savior he thought it not robbed my brother and my sister up in that building I don't know who you are I've never met you all but I can tell the truth on you you if you have not been saved you are a sinner you deserve hell as I did but Jesus did not think it unfair to give up what he had to come down now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very truthful with you I'm gonna be very truthful with you. if I was already in heaven and if I already had diadems and gold and silver and worlds without ends and angels taking care of me, you just have to go to hell. <laughs> amen, amen. I, that, that, that's the truth. And I know you laughing at me. You wouldn't come down either. And I wouldn't give you my grandbaby that I just had, that, 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 that my daughter-in-law had six months ago. I wouldn't have given, I don't know nothing about such love. I can't even conceive of God becoming son of man in order that sons of men may become sons of God. I can't, I, I, I can't conceive of that. I can't conceive of he who was, is, and shall forever be holy and holy and holy slipping in here in the womb of a woman. I can't even conceive of it. Because the next scripture, he said he made of himself no reputation. He made of himself no reputation. Now that's where I would have, had I decided to come, <laughs> you would have known it's God. 
God, I told those angels, get them stairs ready and make them go and get those bands ready to play and play it, play it, play it, play it. I'd walk down the golden steps and I, you know I was God. I'd have made myself some type of reputation. I wouldn't have gone to no place where they didn't have no room for me. I would have had me a golden mansion already built. I would have had silver and gold, and you would too, because you're trying to do it all you can now, and you ain't no God. He made of himself no reputation. What did he do? He slipped in here, unnoticed, in the womb of a young woman, and just stated without the help of the young woman's blood. And just stated for nine months. And was born in a stable, laid in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothing. And he thought it not unfair. No, no, I, I wouldn't have done it. You had to have me the best, well, not only the best sweet, you, you, the best, the best everything for me to come to get you. But he thought it not robbery. And look at something else he did that had to be humiliating, that had to be humiliating, it had to be humiliating. He took up on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself and became obedient. Obedient to who? He's God. He became obedient to the agreement that was worked out with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father said, if you go, and if you die, I'll raise you. And the Holy Spirit said, and if you raise him, I'll go and comfort those who will come after him. And he became obedient even to the death of the cross. And there he hung. And there he bled. And there he died. Spit upon wine biblical every conceivable thing that could be said about it was said about it and he thought it not unfair thought it not unfair there were several problems you know p.s wilkerson says for the first time in history the angels the angels gave god problems because when they saw jesus giving up his position in glory temporarily and taken up on the farm of you and me the angel says no 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 God said yes angel said we've never disobeyed you in our life Pierce Wilkerson said it's not in the book but the angel said no 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 we won't let it happen that no Nobody will spit on our Savior and our God. Nobody will thrust the spirit aside. We won't do that. We won't let it happen. It can't happen to our Shekinah's glory. He's too holy. No sinful, filthy rag will touch his body. And P.S. Wilkerson said God made a compromise with the angels. He said, I'll let y'all go peace way. And I'll let you say, and that's all. And that's why they swung out in glory and said, Glory to God in the highest. Because they said, we got to let y'all know who's here. And Indianapolis needs to know who's here. Somebody on a street corner that God has blessed in this aisle right here, raise your hand that God has been a special blessing to. You ought to holler, Glory! 
be like my very good friend Shamba. Raise that hand and holler, glory! glory! He's healed some of you. He's blessed you with homes and houses and land. But more than that, joy and peace. You ought to just stop on the corner and say, I don't know who your name is, but could I have a word of prayer with you? I just, I just, I just want to say, thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Jesus. They say I'm a radical. They say I'm a fanatical. They say I'm too loud. But they just don't know what God has done for me. Doesn't know what God has done for me. When you come from a log cabin to Indianapolis to a Bill Gates affair, God has done so much for you, you ought to just say, could, 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 could I have a word of prayer with you? I just, I just want to have a word of prayer. I want to, I want to thank God. Thank you! And this Bible says, he after it says, but he became obedient even unto the death of the cross. The ninth verse starts out saying, therefore, and this therefore means this now justifies what is to follow. This therefore now justifies what is to follow. In the light of his fact that he did not consider robbery though he was equal with God, in the light of the fact that he came down, in the light of the fact that he put up on humanity, in the light of the fact that he took our sins to the cross, in the light of the fact that he nailed them to the cross, therefore, the rest of it is justified. And what is the rest of it? God hath highly exalted him. Why don't somebody in Mount Zion say amen? amen. God has highly exalted him. Amen. God looked at him and watched him. And the book said it pleased God to see them bruise him. And God watched him take it. And God heard him say, forgive them for they know not what they do. God saw him save that sinner on the cross. God saw him saving you and me in time. God said, therefore, in the light of, in the light of, he was humble to death. He never sinned. He never said a mumbling word. I'm going to do something for him. I'm going to do something for him that's greater than anything that has ever been done. The earth have folk they call queens and kings and presidents, but I'm fixing to do something that ain't nobody going to match him. I'm going to give him a name that's above every name. Y'all a little too quiet for me here today. I said, I'm going to give him a name above every name. Hey, hey, hey. Ain't no name going to be above his name. Kick Buddha aside. Get away with Muhammad. Throw out Confucius. I'm going to give him a name that's above every name. And his name is above every name. It's the sweetest name as I go to bed at night and wake up in the morning. The name Jesus. 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 Hey, hey, hey. I got to I got to I got to I got to You used to have a bunch of them, but I got a few movie stars around my church. And, 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 and these, you know, these actors and things, Ben Vereen, that crowd. And, and, and the folk just rushed there to get that autograph. So I had to call them in. I said, Jane, Jane Kennedy was in it. I said, y'all, y'all come in my office. I want to tell you something. Now, when anybody asks you for your autograph, just write down there, God loves you. Because your name ain't worth enough. <laughs> Jesse Jackson was visiting my church. He was going to be my speaker one morning and I was reviewing Sunday school lesson for, for the, the department that meets in the, in, the, in the room. And I was talking about Jesus and they sitting there half dead like some of y'all. 
And all of a sudden, Jesse just stumbled in the auditorium. And oh my God, they came like, Jesse, Jesse that, that's Jesse. And I'm, I'm, I'm reviewing the Sunday school lesson. And then I said, wait a minute, hold, hold, hold that. We're good friends. We're prayer partners. A whole lot of people don't know Jesse prays. Any Negro run for president prays. I said, hold it, hold it. I said, Usher, take Dr. Jackson in my office. Lock him up back there. Because I have to get something straight with my church this morning. I don't want no church where Jesse is more popular than Jesus. I don't want no church where Michael Jackson is more popular than, than Jesus. Jesus, the name above every name. And look at here, I'm going to give him a name which is above every name. And then he said, and in and at that name, everything under the earth, all above the earth, all on earth is going to bow and every tongue because of what he's done because of what he did because he didn't think it wrong every tongue is gonna confess, confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god wait a minute wait a minute i've already bowed i've already bowed have you bowed i said have you bowed i've already bowed I've already bowed on my knees and confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord. Have you bowed? I've confessed with my tongue that he's Savior. Have you confessed with your tongue? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? If so, that's wonderful. That's glorious. You're on your way to heaven. You've already been saved. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. You are somebody. You are a child of the King. You are a child of the King right now. And you ought to say it again. Holy, glory, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hey, glory. Came all the way. Just for you. And I thank God that at 11 years old, I accepted him as my Savior. And I thank God he is Lord. And my Savior is God. Ain't that good?